And I'm reading the 29th chapter, beginning with the 13th and the 14th verses, and reading the 18th verse. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as his people have drew near me with their mouths, and with their lips do honor me, but they have removed their hearts far from me, but their fears towards me. It is thought by the prospect of man. Therefore, behold, I will perceive to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of the wise men shall perish, and the understanding of the prudent men shall be hidden. Then the verse I love better than all is that 18th verse, and it says, In that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. These are the words of Isaiah. And Isaiah was a man that never put on colored glasses to see who occupied the front pew. I believe Isaiah... straight at you and hit you right between the eyes with what thus saith the Lord said. I don't believe Isaiah's freedom in the pulpit had anything to do with how much money he had in his pocket. I don't believe Isaiah preached one way to the rich man and another way to the poor man. I believe Isaiah preached God's word because it was God's word and he believed that people ought to live according to God's word. We're living in the day that Isaiah described. He said, men have drew near me with their mouths and with their lips they're honoring God, but they don't have their heart in their worship. Brother, if there's ever a day today when people are drawing near God with their mouths and with their lips, but they don't have their heart in their worship, it's today. Men have a lot of lip service for God. It's a popular thing today to talk about God. Everybody talks about God. Almost every businessman and everywhere you go, Maybe in one breath they'll curse God and with the next breath they'll talk about God because it's popular to talk about God. We have a lot of Christian or churchanity today, but we have very little Christianity. Fewer and fewer are the preachers that will stand in the pulpit and preach God's Word exactly like it says. Fewer and fewer are the preachers that will preach the Gospel just exactly like it's written in God's Word. We have a lot of people that go around praising God with their mouths and with their lips, but they don't have their heart in it. I've been in a lot of churches that couldn't say hallelujah unless they sang it out of a book. I've been in a lot of churches that couldn't say amen anymore. They had to either read it out of a prayer book or have the preacher say it for them. But I'll tell you, I believe when God's love fills your heart, you can still say praise God and hallelujah if you love the Lord with all your heart. If the devil has a right to stand on the street and curse God, if the devil has a right to go into the public buildings and take God's name in vain, how much more does Christians need to go around praising and magnifying the Lord? It's a truth today. Men have drew near God with their mouths and with their lips they're honoring God, but they don't have their heart in their worship. It's got to the place where you can't tell the world from the church. The church goes to the dance halls, the dance halls go to church. The church goes to the beer joints, and the beer joints go to church. The church goes out to the hell holes and the honky tonks. The honky tonks and the hell holes come to church. You can't tell which one's the world and which one's the church. And if a man today stands in God's pulpit and preaches God's word like Isaiah did, it won't be long until people rebel against that man and say, we don't want that kind of preaching. Seldom does people ever get a warning from a pastor anymore. When a pastor does preach against their pet sins and their pet faults, it isn't long until you find that old boy packing his grip and hunting him another place to preach. Why? Because people have turned with itching ears from the Word of God and they want to hear stories and fables and everything else in the world except thus saith the Word of God. They'd rather have a picture machine rolled in and showed some kind of a picture about a dog hurting its foot or a baby's prayers. But very few preachers preach the Word of God from the pulpit exactly like God's Word is written. And when they do preach it, people doesn't like that kind of preaching anymore. They'll begin to hunt other churches to go to or hunt another pastor to fill the pulpit where their preacher, where their preacher's preaching the truth. 
It's your ears no longer want the truth. The church house today has become a place where all they do is serve suppers and chicken and ice cream and tea. I'll tell you the church, those churches that have to serve chicken and ice cream and tea to get people out to church, they're as dead as a chicken, as cold as the ice cream and as weak as a tea. I believe people ought to go to church because they love God. Paul said, let him that's hungry eat at home. Brother, when you go to the house of God, you ought to go to the house of God to pray and to seek God's face and to sing His praises and to draw close to God. Somebody said, Preacher, you're painting an awful dark picture. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm kind of like the man that fell out of the 20-story building and every time he passed a wind, he hollered, As far as I'm gone, I'm doing all right. But he hadn't hit the bottom yet. I believe that's the way a lot of our churches are today. They're going down fast. I believe it's just like the Bible described it here. Men as drew near God with their mouths, with their lips, they're honoring God, but they don't have the heart in their worship. But oh, thank God, God told us something to do when everything got dark and everything got black and men turned away from God and away from the house of God. And the house of God began to go empty on prayer meeting night. And the only way they could draw a crowd was by serving meals and having card parties. God said for us preachers to do something. What did he say for us to do? He told us in the 18th verse, he said, get out of the way. Because he said, in that day, the deaf's going to hear the words of the book. And the eyes of the blind are going to see out of obscurity and out of darkness. In that day, God said, I'll come down and begin to heal the sick. And I'll show them that there is a God in heaven that can still heal the sick. Oh, I've seen God come down and walk in our midst before. Somebody said, are you a healer? No, I never claimed to be a healer. I believe there's one healer, and his name's Jesus. I'll never forget Jackie Rhodes from Delight, Arkansas, was dying with scleroderma, what they call the stone man disease. Her legs had petrified, her arms had petrified and turned to stone. Her stomach had stuck and turned to stone. Doctors had gave her up. There was no hope. They took and sold what groceries they had. In their little store in Delight, Arkansas, and flew Jackie Rhodes to Mayo Brothers. The last examination, they shook their heads and said nothing more can be done. I'm not criticizing doctors. I'm just saying when doctors have done all they can do, Jesus can do something. They sent Jackie Rhodes back to Delight, Arkansas to die. The doctor there in Delight, Arkansas, wrote a letter to the Navy and got her boy out of the Navy to attend his mother's funeral. He knew it would only be a number of days before his mother would pass on. Month after month laying in that bed with her legs turned to stone and as hard as this pulpit and as black as my Bible that I have in my hand with no feeling and no hope that she'd ever live. Her boy came back from the Navy and they heard about the great revival meeting in Little Rock, Arkansas. 21,000 people attending the meeting in one night underneath a large tent. So she sent her boy to see if there's anything to it. And he came back and he said, Mama, the blind see. The lame walk, Mama, the deaf hear. She said, Sonny, that was his name, go call the Methodist preacher and let's see what he says about it. They went and called the Methodist preacher and the Methodist preacher came to the house. He said, Sister Rhodes, what have you got to lose? If I was you, I'd go and see if it was God. You're dying anyhow. Maybe God will have mercy on you. I've read it in the Bible. I've never seen a healing service. I've never prayed for anybody myself, but I know it's the Word of God. So they put Jackie Rhodes in the back of the car on Saturday night after making her a bed on pillows and brought her out to the meeting in the Little Rock, Arkansas. When I went down to pray for her, I laid my hands upon Jackie Rhodes and prayed. And the power of God went through that body. And that woman looked up at me said, I'm healed, and began to kick the covers. Her sister said, look, she's kicking. I said, yes. What's so strange about that? She said, but you can't kick. I said, but she is, isn't she? She said, yes. And I said, in the name of Jesus, get off of that bed and walk. That woman got off of that bed and began to walk. I'll never forget her poor sister right behind her with her hands outstretched. I said, what are you doing? She said, waiting to catch her. I said, get away from her. She's not going to fall. And all over that tent, Jackie Rhodes walked praising and magnifying God. Went back to the Methodist church on Sunday morning. And they shouted the praises of God to see her walk in, turn from stone.